Hello everyone, my name is Mariam and welcome to my Inkscape tutorials. Last time we learned how to draw rectangles, squares, how to resize and scale them, how to rotate the shape um, in different angles and how to control the skew of um, rectangles and squares. Today we are going to learn about um, another shape in our editing and drawing tool menu is the circles, ellipse and arc. That's a very important one. Um, Cricut Design Space, we don't really have um, all the options in the shapes, so we can create them easily in Inkscape and then we can save them like last time as SVG um, file format and then upload it on Cricut Design Space. Okay, so for example, um, before we start drawing, this is um, a completely a perfect circle. And if you can see on the top, um, the width and height are exactly the same. So it's a symmetric, exactly circle. And I always lock my lock pad to keep um, the proportions the same. Now, the X and Y on the control bar, that's called the top control bar specifically for the circle. And the top control bar gets a change for every single tool. So as you can see the X and Y here, this is the position of your circle on your canvas. It's a different than RX and RY. When we go to um, the actual circle tool, the RX and RY is basically the distance of the radius. And the radius is the distance between the center of your circle and the edge of the circle. So as you can see here, this is just a simple explanation. You need to understand really the radius diameter because you will see those numbers often in some functions. So in any circle, when it's a symmetric circle, um, the dot in the middle, that's the center of the object. And the radius is the distance between the center of the object and any of the edge of the circle. The diameter is the whole line in the center of your circle. Of course, because it was a symmetric circle, so of course the R, X and R, Y in our case is exactly the same. When we are drawing any circle, we always hold the control key and that will help us to keep the proportion. It will make it snap at circle one to one ratio. If you continue dragging, it will start taking the ellipse shape, which is two to one ratio or three to one ratio. Um, other examples before I uh, minimize this screen, we have the arc shape. We have also um, a segment shape. So to simply start drawing a circle, ellipse or arc, you need to come on the editing and drawing tool menu and select the circle by clicking on it, or as you can see, the shortcut is letter E on your keyboard. So now once you click on it, it is shaded. And what I need to do, I need to hold the control key and drag. Now why it's not drawing a perfect circle shape? Because Inkscape simply remembers the last shape you drew with the same color, with the same stroke, with the same color of the stroke. So if I wanted to make it a full rounded circle, I can go to the tool control bar and I have the four options on the top. I will select the one on the very right, which makes it full circle. If I want to change the color of my fill, which is inside the circle, I just hit on any color at the bottom. To change the color of the stroke, I simply need to click shift and hit another color on my palette at the bottom. If you want to cancel the stroke, you don't want any stroke, any outline outside your shape, you simply need to do shift. And instead of choosing a color, we click on the X at the bottom. When we have our shape, we need to do um, the same thing we did with a rectangle. Um, it has three stages. So the first stage of the shape is the first click which gives me the diagonal arrows at the corner. And if I click on one of those arrows and drag it diagonally, it's going to make the circle bigger, but keeping the proportions of the size throughout the width and the height. And as you can see here on the top, the width and height is still the same. If I decided to make the circle an oval shape instead, then I'm stretching it from the width or the height. Then in this case, I come to the right side, for example, 
and I stretch it to the right. And in this case, the width will become bigger here than the height. Or if I want to do stretching but from the bottom, then in this case, the height becomes bigger than the width. So you can control your circle and change it to oval or ellipse at any direction. But if you do the dragging while holding the control key, it will definitely going to keep in mind that I need to keep the proportions still of the ratio between the width and height. So even though I am dragging the right one, but because I am holding the control key, it will still make the circle bigger, but it kept the width and the height ratio for me. And as you can see on the top, the width and height still the same. The second stage of our circle, when we do a second click on the object and it changes the arrows on the corners instead of diagonal shape, it changes to rounded corner. So basically, when I click on any of them and drag, it rotates the shape. But because it's a circle, you can't really notice any rotation because it stays exactly the same. Okay, so let's go to the shape and make it a little bit oval. And in this case, let's do the rotation again. Now you will notice the rotation is happening. The third stage of our object is double clicking on the object quickly. And what happens? The same like the rectangle. We find the three handles, but even though they are three handles, they are officially four handles. So we have two squares and we have one rounding handle. We need to remember that the rounding handles is actually the one is going to control the arc and the segment. For the square handles, they are the one going to control the actual resizing for our circle. When we come to this circle, um, the rounding handle, when we drag it, we will find another rounding handle underneath. So let's drag it. Okay, here we go. So the shape has four handles in total. First rounding, second rounding, and the square one, and the second square one. All right, from the very top, you can control also the segment. So with this way, you have a segment, like let's say you want to um, move it a little bit up or a little bit down, you are trying to do, let's say a prime shape. When you do um, the dragging for the rounding handle, you can actually snap it in a perfect way instead of you just to move it in any degree. So if you move the rounding handle while holding the control key, you will notice now it snaps at every 15 degrees. So let's do it. I'm holding the control key. You can see it snaps at 15. You actually can control the snapping degree. To change the snapping degree, you can come on the top and you will find here the preferences. It looks like a tool. You also can open it by um, doing a shortcut, Shift, Control, P. When you open it, select the behavior and then select the steps and they change that number. Rotation snaps every 15 degrees. You can control that one by any degree you like if you prefer a specific angle when you do the snapping. If you actually click on the rounding handle while holding the shift key, it will close the segment into a full circle. Here we go. But of course, we had the option from the beginning to go on the top and control which shape of circle I want. So I can click on that one in the top control bar for the circle and it will give me a full shape and a whole ellipse. Okay, I'm going to put a stroke for this shape. Now, if I want my cutting machine just to, to cut the arc part of that segment, then in this case, I go on the top in the control bar and I select the second option. You can see now, even there is no stroke here. And what I need to do, I need to remove the fill. Here we go. So this is how you can make any 3D pop-up 
butterfly um, circles um, hearts it's the same concept after you draw your shape you wanted to cut a part of the shape remove it and then when we go to Cricut Design Space, attach it to a normal rectangle card, then it only will cut that arc from my card. It will not do a full cut from my card. And in this case, I can keep part of it still attached to the card and I can fold it to give the 3D shape. So this is the idea of the 3D shape. When I have the selector tool, I have different options at the top. So for example, I have here the rotation to the right side clockwise or I have the rotation the other side anti-clockwise I have the flipping horizontally and I have the flipping vertically for those four they are mainly if you have more than one object so let's say we want to draw another couple of objects so if I have three objects for example here I can put them over each other and if I want to make the star at the very bottom, then in this case, I have here two options. The first option, which is the third button on the top, it will make it one step down. So if I click on it, it will go behind the circle. If I click on it again, it will go behind the segment. Okay, but from the beginning, I had the option to go to the very bottom layer. Of course, when I say layer here, it means the layer they stacked above each other, not the layer on the canvas, because everything today we are drawing, it's in layer one. And this is very similar to the Cricut Design Space when we have sent to the back or sent to the top or sent to the front. So it's the same. It's like either one step down or going to the very back at the end behind all the layers or going to the front one step up or going to the very, very top above all the layers. Of course, the X and Y, the position of the object on the canvas, width and height. For those four toggles, they are actually related more to the corners. When you are scaling your object, I will explain that later in a different tutorial. Basically, to delete your object, um, you click on the object you want to delete and hit the delete button on your keyboard. Also, if you want to undo the step you just did, you do Control Z. If you want to redo, it's Control Shift Z. As you can see here, the radius is not perfectly the same. If I click on the square handle while holding the Control key, it made perfectly the radius the same for my shape. So when I draw the shape, I actually normally hold the control key and try to drag. That is perfect to make circle one-to-one -one ratio. And of course, if I decide to drag more to the right side, it changes for the circle, make it ellipse with two-to-one ratio or three-to-one ratio. So now I will hold the control key and drag, but this time I'm going more to the right so it made it like a two to one ratio. When we have our shape, we have in the second stage, which is the second click on the object, the skew arrows, which is the top, bottom, right and left. And simply when we drag it to the right or to the left, it controls the skew. The same with the right and left one. Right, awesome. So I'm gonna do now a selecting all the objects on my screen by pressing Control A, and then I will make my uh, width and height a little bit smaller so I can upload it nicely on Cricut Design Space. Let's do File, Save As to check that everything is done perfectly and uploaded well. Let's give it a name, circles, and we have many types of format. Be sure you have the Inkscape SVG format selected and click save. Then we go to our Cricut Design space, click upload, upload image, browse, we select our file from the location we saved it in, click open. 
and then I give tags as you know I love to add the word Inkscape upload we select it, it has green frame add to canvas and let's see how it will look like on our screen okay awesome it looks perfect of course if we need to select any of them we need to ungroup first so we have the option to select any of them the project has asterisks it's not saved we click save we call it anything we like circles are and ellipse and then we save our design if we want to use any of those shapes in any project please watch the end of um, last tutorial tutorial 3 I showed you how to copy and paste from one window to another in Cricut Design Space I hope this tutorial was useful for you next time we are going to do the stars and how to do a beautiful mandala simple basic one from just the stars and the polygon shape if you'd like to learn more about the Cricut Design Space, please check the video description. There is a link for all the Cricut Design Space series I did. And also there is a link for Facebook group if you need any help while doing designing in vector graphics. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and see you in next tutorial.